Welcome to this demonstration of the CRM to Web Form application or Internet Lead Capture for Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2011. In this demonstration, we will show how to configure the forms to be displayed in CRM without using the form designer, displaying them and publishing them on the website, and finally storing the information back as CRM leads. This functionality will enable you to replace the Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online Internet Lead Capture service that is due to be cancelled in February of this year. The CRM to web form or Internet Lead Capture solution is available for both on-premise and CRM Online deployments. The application can be deployed in your own corporate network on a Windows 2008 server and is currently being tested for Windows Server 2012. Or you can use our own Windows Azure hosted servers for CRM Online. In this demonstration, we'll cover how to configure the web form entity and its related entities, set the display properties in the web form entity, the different types of controls that are supported, viewing the results on the website application, publishing the back to CRM, and finally we'll go over some of the upcoming features of this solution. So let's go ahead and start the demonstration. As we start, let's take a look at our CRM Web Forms entity. You will notice from the view that each of the forms has a form type specified with it. The form type can be either CRM, which means that the form was designed using the CRM form editor, dynamic, which means the fields were stored in CRM related entities, or Silverlight, which will use the Silverlight designer to add sections and fields to the forms. Our previous demonstration covered the CRM form type. In this demonstration, we'll cover the configuration of the dynamic form type. So let's go ahead and open the dynamic form type that we've created before. We'll use this as our startup form, and later in the demonstration, we'll create our own form from scratch. You will notice that the form contains some basic information, such as the name and the code of the entity, a title and description, as well as an image to display in the form header, as well as the text to display on the submit button, and the message to display to the user once the form has been submitted for success or failure of the submission. Under the configuration messages section, you will notice that there is an additional section called dynamic form details containing subgrids of the different sections of the site. Each of these sections has a name property, a display name, the number of columns, the section order, whether to show the label and the bar, and finally whether the section is visible or not on the form. You can specify hidden sections to add pre-populated hidden fields. Let's go ahead and open one of the sections. And you will see that besides the fields that we already discussed prior, the section contains the uh, a subsection called fields which displays the different fields that are going to be available for this section. Each field has the CRM field name, a display name which does not have to be the same as the CRM display name of the schema, a default value that can be displayed on the form, and finally the row number, column number, and column span for each field.
if we open up the address information section you will notice that the street 1 and street 2 fields have a column span of 2 which will cause them to be displayed in multiple cells. Let's go ahead and preview this form on the web. Notice that the form number is 3 and the form name is dynamic form. We will have to specify that information when displaying the URL. After the server name and the port number, we'll enter the following information. Web form, which is the name of the solution. Local, which is the account prefix. This information was entered during the registration process. You can also view a registration video, which shows how to register your account. The number three, which is the number on the form. And dynamic form, which is the name of the form. When the form load, notice that the form contains the header image, the form title, dynamic registration, the form description, and the form is divided into the four sections that we saw on the web form entity. You will also notice that the default value of the topic field is pre-filled. Let's go ahead and fill out this form now and submit it so that it will be stored in CRM. The topic field is a required field. If we do not specify the topic field and try to submit the form, as I'm going to do right now, you will notice that this form will not process and display a red asterisk next to the field stating that this is required. Let's add the topic back to the form. and continue with filling out the form. You will notice that when I tab from one field to the next, the tab order is left to right, up to bottom, So make sure that you place the fields in the proper positions as you design the form. Now that we've filled all the fields, we can click on the register button to submit the form. And you will notice that the confirmation message that we entered in the web form entity will be displayed on this particular form. Let's go back into CRM and view the lead record that was just created. We can open up the lead record and see that all the information that we entered on the web form has been stored in the lead entity. Now that we've seen this process, let's create a CRM web form from scratch. In the web form homepage view, let's click on the new ribbon button and start entering the form details. In the main form, we'll enter the following information. We'll enter create contact as the form name and number four as the form number. We'll specify the form type as dynamic. 
we will review the Silverlight configuration in a future demonstration video. We'll enter contact for the entity name and number two for the entity code. We'll specify the notification email and for the form, form title we'll specify contact form registration please enter your contact details for the form description we'll copy the same header image URL that we had in the other forms that we had below. In the button text we'll enter sign up. For the success message we'll specify thank you for registering and for the failure message we'll just specify an error occurred. We'll go ahead and save this form. And now if we scroll down to the bottom part of the form in the dynamic form details section, we can start entering the sections for the form. We'll click on the dynamic form details and under form sections on the ribbon, we'll specify add new form section. We'll enter the following details in the form. We'll specify the name of the section as general with a section order of one. We'll make this section with two columns. We'll not show a bar or a label, but we'll specify this as visible. We'll go ahead and save this form section and now we, we can now go ahead and enter fields for this particular section. So we can click on the fields subgrid and in the form sections associated ribbon tab click on add new form field. We'll enter the following form field We'll enter salutation for the first field with a row and column number of one and a column span of one. We'll create a second column for the first name with a row number of two, column number and column span of one. And finally, we'll enter a last name field with a row of two, column of two, and a column span of one. We'll go ahead and save and close this particular field. And we'll save and close this section with that we just created. Let's create one more section that will display additional contact information. We'll call this section contact. With a display name of contact and a section order of two. We'll still specify two columns. And for this particular section, we'll show the bar, the label, and we'll set this as visible. Let's go ahead and save this form section. And in the fields subgrid, let's go ahead and add three fields to this section as well. The first field, telephone one, with a display name of business phone. And we'll place this in the first row, first column, 
with a column span of 1. We'll create another field mobile phone with a display name of cell phone and this will be still in the first row second column with a column span of 1. Let's go ahead and save and new and we'll enter one last field on the second row first column and we'll specify for this field that might be longer a column span of two let's go ahead and save and close this form and we'll go ahead and save and close this section as well and we'll open up a new tab and we'll browse to the new web form that we just created and we'll specify the, we'll specify the name as web form the local which is our company prefix the number form for the web form and the create contact which is the name of the form and you will see that the new contact that I created contains the salutation field first name and last name in the first section and then contains the business phone cell phone and email address in the second area of the field so by sending your users to different pages they will be able to fill out different forms for your application. The forms configuration can be used for any CRM entity, either system or custom, that allows for customization. In our next presentation, we'll be covering how to design a form in CRM using Silverlight, which will save some time and effort in the design process. We hope you enjoyed this demo. If you have any question, or if you would like a live demo, please contact us using the information on the slide.